Welcome, welcome everyone who came over from the main channel. Welcome to the first ever monthly Joe Cat Q&A, the mailbag, where I give you some insight into some of my work, updates on things I'm working on, or letting you know what sort of sandwich I ate today. If you've got a question for me, then feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and I'll answer the top voted ones in the next Q&A. I don't know how many, probably like 20 or 30, I'm not so sure yet. But yeah, here we go. Let's start with the questions left under the community post I made over on the main channel. The footage in the background is going to be me playing, just playing some Halo Reach, because I didn't know what to put here. So uh, yeah, enjoy me being okay at Halo on Heroic. Will there potentially be more D&D monster plushies? I'd like to build a little horde. I That is an, an idea that I, I l like. Um, probably not, though. I think the goblin is really the only original thing that I feel is iconic enough and uh, that people would buy. Um, the thing about these plushies is, and it's the same with any sort of merch really, is um, they have to make uh, money back to make it worth it. That's why uh, I have thought about making minis for each of the clap, uh, crap guide classes, but the thing is that some of them are more popular than others, so you know. If we were to mass produce them, some of them, we would have to be doing it at a loss. Uh, and it's really difficult to find a manufacturer that's willing to do that, um, and also find the money to do that as well. Uh, but yeah, that would be the same case with the plushes. Uh, and also, I don't think I even have that many designs that I'm, I'd am i be willing to make turn into a plush. Some people will suggest kobolds, but uh, the kobold design is actually uh, originally comes from uh, a good friend of mine and artist Zito, Chris Zito. He plays Task on The Unexpectables and Lionel in D6 Dawnright, and he's a great artist. Uh, he came up with those uh, cobalt designs. And yeah, if you like those designs, check him out on Twitter. What attracted you to Monster Hunter and the Wiggler hat? Uh, Monster Hunter was a game that I saw was on sale uh, when I had a Wii U and nothing to play on it, and I wanted to play a hack and slash. Uh, and it looked pretty fun, and also Dodger, uh, you know, people who don't know, Dodger, Dex Bonus, um, she is part of the Co-Optional Podcast, and lots of times I heard her talking about it, so, you know, on the podcast she would constantly talk about how great the game is, and occasionally I would see some people playing it, you know, on, on videos and stuff, and so, you know what, I, I bought it, I was like, why not? And then, uh, I, it took me a while, but I fell in love with it eventually, and I just love the game. And the Wiggler hat is because I wanted to make this sort of satirical, condescending character, and I thought, well, he's got to have a stupid outfit, right? Well, what's the most ridiculous uh, costume I can give him? Uh, I have a Wiggler hat. Let's put on the Wiggler hat. It's hilarious. As much as you've grown as a YouTuber, we don't see too much of what goes on behind the curtain. What are some other hobbies, talents you have beyond your channel? Uh, the funny thing is, my hobbies and, and talents and, and other side stuff has kind of shrunk as a result of the channel, taking up more of my time, so I kind of... YouTube really does become your lifeblood when it becomes your job. Um, I did do a little bit of rollerblading. I kind of miss doing that. I think I might do a little bit more of it. But uh, yeah, no, just kind of drawing and gaming, um, playing D&D. <laughs> That is the great and also not so great thing about uh, this whole YouTube thing, is I get to turn my hobby into my job, for better or for worse. Um, so, you know, the videos just are kind of my hobbies, uh, making the videos and the topics that they take as well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks, Ian. Who would win in a fight, you or Puffin? Hmm, I don't know. Well, Ben's taller than me. I think we both have the equal amount of fighting experience. That is not that many, but Ben is taller, which means he has more reach and he's got more weight. I think I stand a good chance and I probably throw in a few good licks, but uh, he would probably come out on top, let's be honest. He's just got more on his side. When's the dating sim coming? Uh, give it a year. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll take like two or three months off just to do it. No promises. If you had to pick one weapon, the sword or the shield, which one would you pick? The shield. Shield can be sharpened and used like a sword, but a sword can only block so much with its surface area. Plus, there's more area to decorate a shield with. I've noticed you practice doing a voice for every character you play and see, like in SCP, Hollow Knight, and Persona 5. Do you think you'll ever try voice acting, or are you regulating it to D&D and YouTube? I would like to uh, voice act more professionally, I guess, but uh, I guess I just need to start putting myself out there, there and uh, doing dubs and stuff and 
Because, I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere. You know, people like ProZD, uh, the Team 4 Star people, they just started doing stuff. They just started doing it. And I guess YouTube is me technically doing it. I just, uh, I don't know, need to give myself more opportunities to put myself in a situation that will require voice acting, I guess. Need to develop a portfolio. But uh, anyone out there who is looking for voice work from someone with the, my kind of voice, uh, my DMs are open on Twitter. Feel free. And my business email is in my uh, about page, so yeah. When, how did you start playing D&D? Any favorite memories you remember when you were playing? Also, happy birthday. Thanks. So, uh, originally, in my sophomore year of college, I was walking around with my good friends, uh, Heather, Ian, and Eric, part of the Hijack crew, for those who remember. But not Kate, because Kate's a nerd, and she was one year behind us, so she was still in high school, I think. I I think so? I don't remember. And we were all in the same college, so we were walking together down these woods. And uh, we were talking about what our fantasy classes would be, and the topic of D&D came up. So, you know, we were talking about basically D&D classes, and we thought, hey, you know what? Uh, this summer, let's play D&D, because it was towards the end of the year. Because uh, Ian was like, I'll run it, because I have a little bit of experience with D&D. And so we were like, yeah. And so we started, and my favorite memory, hmm... It's hard to really describe because some of my- uh, I haven't really played that many games, believe it or not. And uh, some of my favorite memories are already out there publicly, so I'll pick a one that I haven't really shared. Uh, my first character, Rat, is a bard now. He started out as a rogue because I thought rogues were bards um, in terms of like flavor and how they act and stuff. Then again, any character can act like anything with any class, so that w that's not even relevant. But anyway, uh, his original kind of motivation was he wanted to become an airship captain and in one session uh, the party ran into a sunken airship and uh, so they were kind of scavenging it looking for stuff I don't quite remember what uh, and while everyone was investigating kind of below deck rat kind of went up to the wheel to sort of admire it and admire the airship a bunch and because man he has never gotten this close to an airship before and got let alone gotten on one and he dreams to have one one day so he pulls down his hood he grasps the handles on the airship lets the wind blow through his hair and then just looks around make sure nobody's looking and under his breath he just goes <laughs> and it was great it's probably one of my proudest uh role-playing moments. What was the most difficult hurdle to overcome when you started YouTube? Uh, accepting that no one's gonna watch your shit. <laughs> uh, I first started YouTube, I started doing the overly edited series with my friends, and I just had to accept that uh, no one was gonna watch it. But as I started getting uh, more and more popular with the crap guides, the next hurdle that was very difficult for me to overcome was that not everyone's gonna stick around to watch your other stuff because uh, after the crap guides were over i made essentially my dream project the klonoa video uh which i guess i should plug and you should go watch it because it's really good um i made that and it made a fraction of the views as the other videos and uh, that really made me bummed out but um that's another hurdle to overcome is to accept that that not all of your work is going to be popular not all of your work is going to be successful and yeah any tips for being a good dungeon master? There are a bunch of channels that you should watch uh, that will do a better job of answering that very, very complex question. But one piece of advice that I always like to stick by uh, in regards to when a player wants to do something kind of ridiculous or maybe something that you don't necessarily want them to do, a bad DM says, no, you can't. A good DM says, you can certainly try. And sometimes you just kind of have to give up a little bit of some of your direction as a DM and just kind of let the fun thing happen. But of course, that's a very complex question with a billion different answers that you could talk hours on end about, which some channels are dedicated to, and I would highly suggest watching them. Will you be making Joe Cat Eats a Sandwich a series? It was probably the greatest thing I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. I'm very proud of that animation. Uh, I would like to do more animations like that. You know, just short little fun things. Who knows? What inspired help make the fast-talking insult spewing egotistical Monster Hunter character of yourself? I was highly uh, inspired by Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation, um, and also a mixture between that and uh, Master Chief from the show Arby and the Chief, where Master Chief is just this character that's super condescending and doesn't really know what he's talking about, and uh, is just super duper mean uh, in a very, very funny manner. So I just combined those two things and made uh, Joe crap. Uh, and this show, then I just 
really like doing. Will the crap guides continue for other D&D things? Monsters, spells, magic items, etc. Are you planning to moving on to a different system entirely? Uh, I've played around with the thought. Um, I'm thinking if I do, uh, after the D&D series is over, if I do return to D&D as a subject, it will be, you know, random one-off stuff like, I don't know, alignment or... Well, uh, I'm actually working on Crap Guide to Alignment right now. I don't even know if it'll be out by now, or if I've canned it. Because, um, you know, sometimes things just don't go as planned. Uh, if I do return it, it would be one-off things like that, or maybe Kobolds, uh, Magic Schools, you know, th various things like that, because there's so many. Uh, another idea would have been, and this is not a promise, like I said, uh, no promises for the crap guides because they're so intensive on me, would be, you know, making crap guide to other subjects like video games or movies and things like that. But of course, that's if I did. I have no real plans, really. I think I'm going to take a very long break after the crap guides of D&D are over. But yeah, it would be those. If you could collaborate with any content creator on YouTube, uh, who would it be? I've got multiple answers to this. Uh, the most immediate one that comes to mind is Game Grumps. Uh, they're great, they're wonderful, they're hilarious, and you know, I, I would like to meet Dan and Aaron personally one day. They seem like cool guys and playing games together seems like a fun time. Another one would be, I don't know, a few animators, uh, you know, the, your, the, the usual suspects. Uh, I don't know if they're too big for me, just because, I don't know, that would give me an excuse to make more animations, I guess, because I would like to make animations. One that's a little bit of a downer because um, I'll never get the chance is uh, Total Biscuit. Those of you who don't know, Total Biscuit was a video games critic slash reviewer slash, you know, journalist. And he passed away a couple of years ago, ago due to colon cancer, which was very sad because he is definitely one of uh, the content creators that I've always looked up to and always wanted to meet. Um, you know, I, I loved watching all of his stuff, all of his WTF is, and, you know, coverage of other games, his Terraria playthrough with Jesse Cox is still one of my favorites of all time. And I just admired his just integrity and in how much he was for consumers. And, you know, I always looked up to him a lot. Uh, just, man, and he he has an eye for, for high production value as well, which uh, is a big inspiration for me. But I guess if I had one wish, with unlimited possibilities of who to collaborate with, it would have been Total Biscuit. Do you think you'll ever do another analysis like the Klonoa and Pokemon design videos? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do want to do that more. Uh, I just really love that kind of content. Um, like, uh, you know, I, I grew up watching things like JonTron and ProJared and AVGN and, you know, all, all those, like, video game coverage things. Uh, more recently, that one was kind of more inspired by uh, Gregzilla as well, in how it's formatted. Um, I think I would like to do a restructuring of the assets, because uh, looking at them now, I kind of don't like how I, I drew a lot of the stuff. Not necessarily draw, like how they're drawn is fine, I, drew, I still think their quality holds up, but like, I don't know, it's super zoomed out and like, only a small portion of the character is animated, so you have to keep darting your head, your eyes back and forth between him and the screen, and it, it just takes up, it's just a, it's such a waste of space that I think I would maybe have it more close up or just redraw it entirely. But yeah, I totally am considering maybe uh, if I restructured the channel like considerably in what kind of content I put on it, uh, that would probably be the primary content, maybe like monthly or bi-monthly. What other games do you think will eventually feel the wrath of the sword and shield and submit to its power like Pokemon and Happy Birthday? Uh, I thought Happy Birthday was a game. It's like, oh, there's a game called Happy Birthday. I don't know. I mean, sword and shield is kind of a generic sort of weapon combination, you know. It's not necessarily something that you name a game after, but Pokemon has been very generic. And when I say generic, I mean, like, it's not, you know, out there or, you know... Pokemon likes to name their games very definitive in these, like, nice, round words. I, I don't really know how to describe it, you know, diamond and pearl, uh, ruby and sapphire, you know, black and white, sun and moon, you know, it's, they, they take two, two very known concepts that are parallel to each other, sword and shield. I think that's a thing that's more unique to Pokemon. How did I learn to draw? By drawing, uh, for many, 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 many years. And taking a bunch of classes. Uh, I mean, that's not the most exciting answer, but it's, it's true. Is Sword and Shield actually the best, or was that just a meme for the crap guide? Uh, it's... so it's a, a little bit half and half. 
I uh, did kind of want to make that a running joke and a meme, and I'm really glad that that took off and that is becoming essentially exactly what I was hoping for uh, in terms of meme potential and running joke stuff. Um, and I do think it's a pretty good weapon in Monster Hunter. It is decently reliable. Um, it is an all-arounder. It is a jack-of-all-trades. Uh, it has some lacking. I wouldn't say that it's the top tier, uh, although maybe some, you know, min-maxers or speedrunners can prove me otherwise that it is or is terrible. But, um, yeah, it's an alright weapon. It's pretty good. It's my personal favorite, which is why I made the meme in the first place. What is the most interesting slash unusual character you've ever rolled up? Uh, definitely Flopper. Flopper it was an e for a character for an evil campaign, or rather evil one-off that I played with the Mercs of Mischief, and you can watch the VOD here. Uh, he is a Kenku rogue mastermind, I think? Uh, either mastermind or inquisitive, I don't remember which one, but um, he is a very golem-like servant that, uh, you know, very Igor-esque. But uh, what makes him evil is whenever his master would reach the height of its power, um, he would betray them <laughs> and then just kind of kill them in some way. Uh, I didn't really get to play up that much of that, and I, I saw an opportunity that I should have done it. If you watched that session, I should have done that when we found the dragon. I should have had the dragon roast the other players. That would have been great. But um, no, he is probably my most interesting character because he's my first real evil character that I'm, I'm actually thinking about how to be evil. Um, I think I would like to play him again one day. Who knows? Best D&D &D campaign I've been in. Hmm, I haven't been in many, but I think I had the most fun playing D&D &D when I was on The Unexpectables just because Monty Glue is just a fantastic dungeon master. Um, as far as full campaign goes, I'm not sure. I've just not played that many, um, and they're all, you know, kind of around the same. I, I kind of like them all pretty equally. It's just that Monty's the one that sticks out the most, I, I guess, because I was playing with, you know, these people who have been around, pl been playing this game for a long time and just have a great chemistry, and I was along for the ride, and it was super fun. If you were able to change your life to something else, would you? Why slash why not? Oh, maybe, maybe. I think if I could change it to anything, I would definitely change it to the director of, of I don't know, a video game uh, development team or something, something like that. But uh, I would definitely still be creating things, something very similar. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm hard pressed. I'm pretty happy with where I am now. This is really a dream come true. And it's hard to say that I would trade it for anything, really. I, I love having an audience. I love producing things that people are a fan of. Which I guess is why I would like to be a game dev, um, if I could change it to anything. Um, because then I would still be producing things for people to enjoy. Either that or an animation lead, one of those. Making things. They're fun. What inspired you to make YouTube videos on D&D? Oh, the age-old question. Uh, well, because I like D&D. <laughs> I made the Crap Guys for Monster Hunter because I like Monster Hunter. Uh, I guess it could originate from that. I made the Crap Guys for Monster Hunter because I wanted to get a bunch of friends into Monster Hunter, but a bunch of guides online were way too long and a little bit overwhelming. So I wanted to make a quick guide that would work to entertain and also inform my friends on how to play Monster Hunter. So, and then I just extended that to d and I guess, to show to my friends how to play d and in a quick and easy manner that's pretty funny to watch. What is your favorite character from Dingo Doodle's Fool's Gold series so far? I think Gothi. I just really like her design. Uh, she's very cool and uh, <laughs> seems to get shit done, which is always nice. She keeps the, the party kind of under control uh, as best she can. And I don't know, just that mask. Mostly, it's, it's mostly because of her design. She just looks cool. And Dingo just has a wonderful art style. What tips and advice do you have for an aspiring graphic designer that you wish you would have known before? Firstly, take your goddamn time. Don't try to bullshit, oh, I went for a more simple uh, style, which, you know, that's totally fine, but it, it, sometimes it's very, very easy to tell when you rush your work, so don't do that. Secondly, go above and beyond. Think outside the box for your graphic design stuff. So like, uh, you know, when you're presenting posters or merchandise or t-shirts and things like that, go even further. One, one person, I think his name was Daniel, I don't quite remember, he 
we had to do sort of a marketing campaign for local foods, right? So he did the the usual spread of stuff. He did, you know, here's the poster, here's the marketing campaign, here's the website, here's the whatever, all that stuff. But he went even further. He he did like he did like little flyers and little business cards and like little bunch of stuff and he even had like a, a QR code that you could scan with an app that would show like a video on the poster. Think about all that cool shit, you know, all that cool stuff to get people engaged in your graphic design stuff. Make a video. That's, you know, it's that's how I got started uh, working on my YouTube video stuff is that I started making videos for some of my graphic design projects. I made a little fake commercial for my uh, local foods marketing campaign. Think outside the box. Apply your hobbies and passions and talents into your projects. Why the name Joe Cat? Uh, my name, my full name is Joseph Catalanello, and uh, you know, to shorten it, it becomes Joe Cat, and Joe Cat is also a nickname I had in high school. How long does it usually take on your crap guy vids? And that's a really complex question, because, or rather, there's a very complex answer, because does it count as working on the crap guides if I'm trying to think about what to write? You know, that's the thing, right? It's like, a lot of times writers spend trying to get inspired and you know even when i'm writing so let's let's say you know i'm i'm just kind of thinking about the guides does that count because if it does then it takes me a really really long time to think about them but if you're talking purely about the actual time that i'm working on it and actually producing things that are presentable like a script and video um probably around like i don't know like 20-ish hours. When when they're fully ready to be made, they surprisingly don't take that long to make. It's just the pre-production part, you know? It's it's writing it and trying to come up with things that are worth <laughs> making jokes and actually worth turning into a video, you know? Sometimes you just don't have material. But uh, yeah, actual production time, around 20 to 25 hours. Something like uh, about um, three, four, five hours actually writing the script. Uh, maybe one hour uh, reading and editing down the audio for the, the kind of voiceover. And then something around like 15 to 20 hours drawing all the frames. But of course, this is spread over the period of like a week or so, things like that. Yeah, trying to get motivation to do them can sometimes be pretty difficult. How many influencer YouTube slash Twitch friends do you have and how do friendships like that compare to the average roommate? Huh, I think I have, I know, it's hard to, I don't know, it's, it's hard to really call a lot of them friends because like that to me describes a certain kind of familiarity with them, which I don't think I have with all of them. I think most of them I would consider good acquaintances and on good terms. I just, you know, we don't really hang out or I don't know them that well. Uh, not that I wouldn't like to know them better, um, or have anything against them, or using that as a slight. It's just uh, a lot of them I only talk to, you know, every now and then, and are on good terms with. But I guess if you mean that, then quite a few, actually. It's a pretty tight-knit uh, kind of mini-community, I guess you could call it. A lot of people know a lot of other people, which I think will come as a surprise to the audience, because uh, from the outside it can seem like we're each, each in our bubbles, but no. Big creators and small creators, we all kind of sometimes kind of know of each other and sometimes talk with each other. Uh, I kind of messaged uh, quite a few recently about um, kind of a merchandise service that uh, I saw that they have. You know, and these are some big people that have been around longer than I have, but like I, I was contacted by like a merch company that was like, oh, we want to do a merch deal with you. And I was like, hmm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna look into it first. And then I saw that these big creators were on there and I was like, hey, big creators, uh, I'm a fellow creator uh, and I was contacted by this merch store. Uh, what is your experience with the merch store? And then, you know, we talked and yeah, and you know, they're very friendly and willing to help out. And generally, you know, people are pretty nice. And because we all know that we're all trying to get through this thing together and kind of uh, suffering together. Seems like I didn't actually answer the question with that, but I guess, uh, uh, just trying to count, let's see. Probably over, like, two dozen or so, maybe even more than that. I know, it's, like, I, I've talked with and been acknowledged, uh, by a lot of people that I, that I looked up to, and, and still do, honestly. 
and it's still crazy to think it's like whoa this guy knows who i am that's na- that's nuts there's no real hierarchy to this whole thing it, it's not like you know those high school movies where it's like oh those are the popular kids well there are popular kids but they're they're nice they're nice popular kids if you had to pick between waffles pancakes or french toast which would you rather get a mouthful of pancakes because uh, i just like them they're, they're soft and nice uh waffles is a nice close second because there's a lot of things you can do with waffles and sometimes i like crunchy over soft but yeah pancakes french toast uh not a big fan french toast is a soaky gross bread on a pan and i will have none of it if you were one of the last two people in the world who would the other person be I guess I would want it to be my significant other, uh, if I ever find one, eventually. But uh, otherwise, ah, jeez, it's hard to pick anyone from the hijack crew. One of the members of the hijack peeps, I guess. Bard is the best class in everything, but what is the best subclass? Asking for a friend. Hmm. Well, if you're talking about Bard specifically, my personal favorite is the Bard of Swords. Just because you can do a bunch of cool flourishes with your bardic inspiration. Although, you know, lore is nice that so you get more magical secrets. I don't know. Ah, uh, it's tough. If we're talking every uh, every class, I don't know. That's going to take a long time to answer. Uh, so I guess I'll just go with um, Warlock, Hexblade, Sorcerer of Wild Magic, Fighter, Battle Master, Cleric, Forge Domain, uh, it's, those are just the top of my head, I guess. Do you plan to finish your editing of Platinum Nuzlocke, or is that dead? Yes, eventually. <laughs> it's just, I have to, pri- the thing is, I'm a one-man band, so I have to prioritize what videos I'm going to work on. And right now, I am prioritizing the crap guides at the moment of, you know, making this Q&A. If you're watching from the future, maybe the, the crap guides are over and the Platinum Nuzlocke's are out now. But yeah, and also I think given the choice between the two, a lot of people would prefer the crap guides out right now. Um, but it, that is going to happen once I'm done with the crap guides and have a little bit more time on my hands. It is still there though. I, have, I haven't canceled it. Uh, if it does, um, if I do cancel it, you will know. I will make an announcement. But otherwise, uh, assume that it's still going. It's just on the shelf right now. What's a song that's really meaningful to you? If We Hold On Together from The Land Before Time, that was one of my favorite films growing up, and uh, it is a song that instantly transports me back to my childhood and is just nearly brings me to tears every time I hear it. It reminds me of a much simpler time and a very nice time that I, I still look fondly back on. Do you plan on collaborating with Overly Sarcastic Productions again? Now, it was a blast watching one of my favorite creators discussing D&D with one of my other favorite creators. Yeah, I, I would like to uh, collaborate with them uh, again one day. Either a video on my channel or a video on theirs. I would love to be on Trope Talk. That would be hella cool. Hey, Red, if you're watching this, uh, maybe I could join in a Trope Talk. I don't know. That, that would be fun. Up to you, though. Uh, or, you know, if I come up with any ideas, I'll definitely hit them up. We're, we're good friends. We seem to be chummy with each other, so I'm sure they'd be down for any sort of collab I have. Or maybe I already do. Ooh. And I'm going to cut the questions there because I think I answered a lot of them. And uh, yeah, uh, this video is probably going to be going on for a long time. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for watching the videos um, and giving me your questions. I hope I answered them satisfactorily. Uh, if not, uh, sorry, but, you know, if you didn't get your question answered, you could always leave it underneath this video, and I will answer them at the end of next month with the next episode of the mailbag. Until then, I will see you later. Goodbye. What's the situation at Starport, Texas? The last transport is away. All right. We're bringing you to us. 